This is a model of P4, white phosphorus, which has four phosphorus atoms joined together as a tetrahedron. But you can see that the bonds are really bent. Chemists call them banana bonds because it looks just like a banana with a bit of imagination. And this makes the molecule very reactive, particularly if you get the phosphorus finely divided or you warm it a little, it reacts with oxygen and bursts into flames. One of my colleagues was wearing a tie. You can see a rather nice tie. And he got a bit carried away during demonstration and spilt a solution of white phosphorus on the end of his tie. And before the end of the lecture, the solvent had evaporated and his tie caught fire. And you can see a whole chunk of it has got burnt off. So as the, the carbon disulfide evaporates from the paper, well, there's a couple of drips. <laughs> and you can see that the phosphorus is oxidized in the air and it's taken some of the paper with it to generate a nice P for phosphorus. <laughs> Just a little bit of smoke. I was really excited to say I'd never seen a tie that had been burnt with phosphorus before. So he gave it to me, provided that I gave him a new tie instead. I've still got to order it. The product from the reaction is the slightly mysteriously called phosphorus pentoxide. Pentoxide means five oxygen atoms. And the reason it's mysterious is because the molecule actually has ten oxygen atoms. It has four attached, one to each phosphorus, and then instead of the banana bonds, you now have an oxygen atom in between. This material is white, and its great property is that it reacts very vigorously, very violently with water to make phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid is a bit disappointing if you like strong acids because it's rather weak, it doesn't corrode things very much. But if you breathe phosphorus pentoxide vapour, it reacts with the water in your nose and your mouth, making the acid, which is not at all pleasant. Because what you're seeing is the phosphorus pentoxide on the side of the flask, which is a phosphorescent compound. So it's getting excited and then it's phosphorescing. There is a small amount of phosphorus pentoxide coming out at the top, which is drying my throat slightly. <laughs> but chemists find this really valuable compound because if there's just a tiny trace of water in something, it will react and remove it. Now, there are many chemicals that react with water. And if you're studying them, the last thing you want is to have a small amount of water in the solution that you're doing the reaction in, because your beautiful compound suddenly reacts and disappears. But if you use phosphorus pentoxide, it will get every last drop of water out of your solvent or whatever you're using, so it'll be really dry, so you can do the chemical reaction just as you want. Phosphorus is a very, very reactive element, especially this type of phosphorus, which is white phosphorus. Phosphorus itself, elemental phosphorus, exists as a number of different allotropes, so a bit like carbon with diamond and graphite. And here we have one of those allotropes, it's white phosphorus. Many elements exist in several different forms. And Phosphorus is in the same group as nitrogen. Nitrogen exists as N2 molecules with two nitrogen atoms joined together by three bonds. But phosphorus forms this P4 molecule. And you have to heat this up to several thousand degrees centigrade, 18, I think it's 1800 degrees centigrade, to get much P2 in the gas phase. So you can get P2? You can get P2, but as you go down the periodic table, elements become less and less likely to form multiple bonds between them. To make P2 or N2, you have to have three bonds, a triple bond, whereas in this molecule, the phosphorus still has three bonds, but it's got three single bonds. In terms of the energy of the molecule, P4 is more stable than P2, whereas for nitrogen, it's the other way around. But once you've got single bonds, 
you can arrange the single bonds in different ways. So you can get a different form of phosphorus called red phosphorus, where instead of having four phosphorus atoms as a tetrahedron, you have six phosphorus atoms in a ring. And because they're not bent, the bonds are not nearly as reactive in red phosphorus. So your tie wouldn't catch fire with red phosphorus. White phosphorus, for many years, has been used in so-called incendiary bombs. Um, these are bombs or shells that are used in war to set fire to things. If you set fire to somebody's, the building somebody's in, they're either killed or they have to leave. And the problem with phosphorus and what makes these bombs so unpleasant is that as it burns, it liquefies and can stick to people and set fire to people as well. War is always a horrible thing and killing anybody is horrible. But using white phosphorus can cause considerable suffering and particularly when used in areas where there's civilians, it is something which really is not to be encouraged.